blessed. Well, I'm happy. We are so blessed. God has done so much for us. Right? And this is just the beginning. Right? The scripture said more than once concerning the king, said as long as they sought the Lord, the Lord made them to prosper. Right? How many think that's a good idea for us? And for you, an individual, and your family, as long as we seek the Lord, He makes us to prosper. And, and why? Well, so we can be a blessing. So we can do His work. So we can help other people. The more you got, the more you can do with it. Right? Thank you, Lord. Um, before I forget about it, we uh, we've have spoken with the Service International again. Uh, and they are in the midst of kind of, I guess they're securing another place. Is that right, Dave? And so they're going to be ready for some more folk in another week or so, better than they are right now. So we'll be putting another team together, maybe a week or so, but they'll still be <laughs> able to use as many as we can send. And then we've all, all got some more money that has come in that we can send as well. And so uh, we'll be continuing along that because folks are going to need help for a long time. And what happens a lot of times is people, uh, while something's just happened, it's fresh in people's mind. But uh, we just, we want to keep it in mind as time goes on. Not just do something, you know, for a little bit. And, but uh, we want to keep sowing. Uh, would you turn this evening, please, to uh, the fourth chapter of Proverbs. If you didn't bring a Bible with you. We have extra things, Bibles we'd be glad to uh, let you use. Maybe you got several at home but didn't bring one. Hold up your hand if you need to use a Bible tonight and take the time, make the effort. Find the scriptures with us, read with us, important. One of the biggest failures in Christendom is people not putting the word first place in their life. There's uh, something else is what I think opinions, theories, experiences, every other thing, religion, it's not the word, uh, churchism, denomination, denominationalism, um, but it's something that's pushing out the word. You know, the Lord said to individuals, he said, you've made the word of God of none effect by your traditions. They were holding on to it. I had a lady come one time after service wanting to correct me. It wasn't the first time. And, and she was trying to tell me something, and I, I quoted a scripture to her. And she, she quoted back to me. She said, yeah, but Brother Keith, the song says. I said, the what? She said, the song. She quoted me to something out of a hymnal that was completely uh, unscripturally, it, it was contradictory to the scripture I just quoted her, but she had more confidence in the old song than she did in the Bible. Now, this is not rare. This is common, this kind of thing. Are you with me now? Because people believe what they believe. By golly. <laughs> and I got a right to my beliefs just as much as you preach. No, you don't. No, you don't. Nor do I. If Jesus is our Lord, then He tells us what to believe in this book. Right? We believe this. No matter what you feel or what, what you've experienced, nothing else is worthy of building your life on. Heaven and earth will pass away and all the stuff in it. But this Word, oh, hallelujah, will never pass away you can stand on this. You can build your life on this. And when, when the storms of life come, when other people, you know, falter and fail, you'll stand. You know, we're talking about wisdom. And uh, do you have Proverbs 4? Good. Well, hold that and go to Matthew. <laughs> And let's remind ourselves of this. I 
Y'all may have to help me here. <clears throat> Obviously, I didn't plan this, <laughs> which is not unusual. Where's the talk about the man that uh, built his house on the rock? Seven. Yeah, 724. Thank you. Thank you. That's about three chapters away. 724. He said, therefore, Matthew 724, whoever hears these sayings of mine and what? Does them. I will liken him unto a wise man. A what kind of man? Wise. When it says what we've been talking about for the past several weeks now. The wisdom of God. And he said, I'll, I'll liken him to a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Now what is the rock? In, in, now you've got to keep it right here in this story. What is the rock in this verse? Hmm? Well, I know, I know it sounds good. That it's the word, and really, and Jesus is the rock, that's true, and he is the word, and the word is the rock, but specifically speaking, in this verse, what is being, what is the rock? Doing. Doing what he said. Put you on the rock. Did you see that now? Not, not just the word, but what? Doing it. So a lot of folk have missed that, they it's, you know, it's kind of like people agreeing. And they say, well, you know, let's agree in prayer. You agree with me on this? Yeah, I agree. Let's go. That's not what the scripture says. If any two of you on earth would agree as touching anything they ask. So if you don't ask, you didn't do the verse. Did you hear me now? If you don't ask, then what are you agreeing on? Y'all agree with me? Some people say, yeah, we agree, you know. Well, would you agree with me on this? I, I agree. No, that's not how you do it. If you're going to do the verse, you stop. Right? We're going to ask the Father to do something. You and I are going to believe He hears us and believe we receive it, and we're coming into agreement together that He's heard us and we expect it. Right? You've got to watch about just rushing through things or things becoming just a habit. And uh, listen to me, there are times when you ought not agree. People say, agree with me on this. Well, what are we standing on? Because people will ask you to agree and pray with them on things that are not even biblical, not even scriptural, things that are not even the will of God. And you should not just blindly and automatically say, yeah, I'll pray for that. Yeah, I agree with that. No, don't do that. Don't do that. It hurts your faith. When you pray and don't get results. And when you don't pray according to the word and you don't pray in faith, you won't get results. And that's what's wrong with so many people. They have, they have prayed and prayed and prayed and they can't see any results. And they get disillusioned and think, well, why pray? And you got all kind of people that, why go to church? What good does it do? Why read your Bible? And you got a lot of places where people are going and the preacher's telling them it don't make no difference what you pray. God's going to do what he decides anyway. Right? And so people are thinking, well, why pray? <laughs> oh, some of the looks I'm getting all across. <laughs> well, let's just take healing. I, I'm not talking about anybody else. I'm talking about what I used to do. I used to go with my pastor, good man. And we were walking in all the light we have. We'd go visit people at the hospital. And this is how we'd pray. We'd say, Lord, heal our dear sister, if it be thy will. And if not, thy will be done. 
Now, now what are we saying? What do we believe? We believe God is going to do what God is going to do. And we're saying, Lord, if it's your will, heal her. But of course, if it was your will, you'd have healed her anyway. But if not, don't heal her. But of course, if it wasn't your will, you wouldn't have healed her anyway. <laughs> right? So Lord, you're going to do what you're going to do. No matter what we do. So in other words, why am I praying? Where does prayer come in? Where does faith come in? People don't want to look at things that's black and white. They want it to be mysterious. And go, well, you just never know. You just never know. And that is not a scripture. And it's not fa- The Bible says, don't be unwise. No, we're talking about wisdom. Don't be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Ephesians 5, 17. Understanding what the will of the Lord is. That's why He gave us the book. That's why He gave us the Holy Spirit to teach us so we'd find out and know what the will of God is. And then once we know, take a stand of faith on it. Right? Take a stand of faith. If you're unsure of the will of God, then you cannot have faith in that area. Like Dr. Bosworth said, faith begins where the will of God is known. You can't have faith unless you are convinced and persuaded of the will of God. How's a person going to get born again? And they're not sure whether God wants to save them or not. Whether it's God's will to save me or not. I mean, what if somebody came down the altar and they're lost. And you say, well, Lord, save them if it be thy will. What would people do? Most anybody in any Christian church would say, oh, no, 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 no. No, you don't pray that way. Why? Because we know it's the will of God for them to be saved. How do you know? Well, why can't you pray that way about healing? Or other things. Right? You see what I'm saying? It's, it's ignorance. And I'm, I'm not talking about somebody else told you what I did. But I changed the way I pray. And we've seen a whole lot better results since then, too. Well, you hear all these testimonies. These people are not praying, if it be thy will. I say, well, now, Brother Keith, Brother Keith. Jesus prayed, if it be thy will. I know. But he wasn't having a healing meeting in the garden. Was he now? (laughs) And you never see him or any of the apostles or disciples in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts ever pray for the sick with an if it be thy will. Ever. So then it's unscriptural. To pray that way. Because in order for something to be scriptural, what do you need for it? Scriptures. <laughs> right? Show us a scripture. Where they prayed, Jesus prayed that way, or they prayed that way in the New Testament. You can't. Thanks be unto God. When you know the will of God, faith comes up in you. Confidence and boldness. And then you can come boldly before the throne of grace. Not arrogantly, not proudly, but boldly with confidence. Why? Because you know the will of God now. You're not wondering and wavering and what if and we don't know. No, he said so, so we know. And that's what faith is all about. Faith is sure. Faith is confident. Faith is fully persuaded. He said, the the wise man builds his house on the rock. The rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew. Some stuff went on, didn't it? And beat on the house. Now let's just stop right here. If you are a man of faith, does that ensure you will never have a storm? No, it does not. 
This man is a doer of the word. The one he's talking about right here. This is a wise man. This man has heard the word. He believed the word. And he has acted on the word. He is a perpetual lifestyle doer of the word. And he had a storm. It rained. Brother, did it rain. Until the floods came. Right? He had rain. He had floods. He had winds. I mean big winds. And it beat on the house. See, this is where a lot of folk get in trouble because if there's any rain or if there's the wind, they go, I don't understand. I'm a faith person. This is not supposed to be happening to me. (laughs) Now we're just finding out how much of a faith person you're not. Because we don't really see your faith until the pressure's on. Until it doesn't look like it or feel like it, then is when you see faith. No, but he just keeps doing the word, doing the word, doing the word. And the storm came, the floods came, the wind blew. It beat on him. Being a faith man or woman doesn't mean you'll never have any challenges. He got, I mean, he got rained on. He got, he got floods came against him. Uh, he, his house got beat on. But it fell not. It didn't fall. For it was founded upon a rock. Everyone that hears these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a what? Foolish. So a foolish person is one who hears and doesn't do. A wise man hears and does. He'll be likened to a foolish man that built his house on the sand and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew, same thing, and beat on the house, but what happened? What's the big difference? Both of them encountered storms in life. The big difference is it fell. And when it fell, it completely fell. It Great was the fall of it. So the wise man is the doer of the word. How many doers do I have in here? Say it out loud, I'm a doer. I'm a doer. I'm a doer doer of the word of God. Are you going to have to withstand some symptoms on situations? Will there be times when something is pelting you? Hmm? The floods are slapping up against your house. Does that mean that you have failed? No. No. What do we do now? Having done all to stand? You stand. You keep saying it. Even when it looks like it's too late and it's too far gone. You keep saying it. You keep expecting it. You keep saying it. And I mean it may be raining so loud you got to yell. To get above the rain. And the thunder may be shaking your house. And the floods are slapping up against your door. But what do you do? You keep doing the same thing you were doing yesterday and the day before because the Word does not change. And the great thing is, sooner or later that's got to subside. And when the dust clears, you'll be standing there with the miracle, with the blessing. Oh, can you say amen? Through faith and patience, persistence, Endurance, we inherit all the promises and blessings and benefits of God. Can you say amen? And it's a wise man that'll do it and keep on doing it. Why? Because he knows this can't last. A wise person sees past this, this stuff in front of you and sees the end result and goes, no, this has to change. I mean, God will not let his word fail. He cannot lie. So I'm standing, I'm staying. Do you still have Proverbs 4? Good. I thought you needed to hear that before we we got to this. Are y'all believing God with me tonight? Man, we've got some really good things to get to. And sometimes people people might think, well, why don't you just hurry up and get to them? (laughs) It's not that simple. You know, there's a great scripture in Ecclesiastes. It says, wherever the tree falls, to the north or the south, wherever it falls, that's where it lays. (laughs) That's deep, yeah. (laughs) Wherever the the tree falls, 
That's where it lays. If it fell the other way, it'd lay that way. Anybody ever cut any trees? Well, if you ever cut any trees out in the woods, sure enough woods, you'll learn that you have to learn how to throw the tree to make it lay where you want it to lay. You cut it wrong, or some of you might have found out. Bought, bought you a new chainsaw. <laughs> Who was that was the chainsaw? Mary? Mary? Yeah, there she is. Chainsaw gal. It's all I've heard all week. Thanks a lot. Chainsaw, chainsaw. <laughs> Think about Phyllis when she starts talking about it, she gets this gleam in her eye. And I'm thinking, I like our trees around the house there. <laughs> but if you, uh, if you don't know how to cut a tree, you just go, hey, I'm going to cut this tree down. You got to get out there and get to cutting, get to cutting. And you hear it crack and you step out of the way and you go, no, 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 not that way, not that way. <laughs> Boom. Right into your house or right across your car. You threw it the wrong way and it lay in the wrong spot. <laughs> well, in bringing a message, it's that way. We got the big tree. We want to throw it in the right place. And if it lays right and it lays in your heart, right. it'll be there 50 years from now. Right? Yes. That's right. right? That's right. But sometimes before you throw the big tree, you got a lot of other little trees. If you don't get them out of the way, you ever, anybody ever been in the woods before you learn how and you cut a tree and you got it cut and it went... Bruh. And that's it, because there were so many other trees around, it wouldn't fall. <laughs> and you thought, I should have cut those other trees first. <laughs> well, you weren't wise. And uh, sometimes that's what's happening when we deal with this, then we deal with that, then we deal with this. It's, We're getting these other little trees out of the way so we can throw the big tree. And if y'all will stay with me and believe with me, we'll get the, get the big trees. Amen. Proverbs 4, are you there? Proverbs 4, verse 5, 6, and 7 has been our main text for our study on the wisdom of God that we've been involved with for some weeks here. If you're, this is your first time with us on this, then, um, you, you know, there's a lot has gone on before this. Uh, get the the tapes, the CDs, they're available for free. You can download them for free off the website. It's all free. Download and, and, and get a hold of it and get caught up with us. Verse 5 says, get wisdom. Get understanding. Forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, she'll preserve you. Love her, she'll keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore, get wisdom. And with all you're getting, get understanding. So what's the emphasis in this passage? Get it. Who's the understood subject? You. You get it. You get what? Get wisdom. Get understanding. It must be available. Or he wouldn't tell us to get it. Right? Right? And we're not waiting on him because he didn't say, wait till I give it to you. What did he say? Yes. Which must mean it's there. Right? When mama says, come and get it. Does that mean she's starting to cook? No, no, you understand it's on the table. Come and get it. It's ready. Well, the wisdom is ready. The understanding is ready. He told us to get it. Now, we've gone over a number of things about how we lay hold of wisdom and understanding. But let's go on uh, further. Today we talked about discernment the last uh, two Fridays, I believe it was. Now, I'm going to have to clear out another little tree here. Uh, <laughs> uh, I done told you all some of my secrets now, what I'm doing. Do you understand that... The, 
one of the biggest hindrances to revelation in services is the flesh. Right? Yours and mine. Because the flesh is so antsy and, will, and impatient. Right? And the flesh wants to be done, wants to be through. Right? Hurry up, hurry up. But that's not how it works. The things of God don't work that way. You don't, you don't rush God. You don't rush in and go, hurry up, God, hurry up. <laughs> no, you've got you to wait on the Lord. Right? You've got to do it His way. You don't tell Him how to teach you. You don't tell Him how to heal you. Did you hear me? You don't tell Him how. You've you got to wait on Him. Let Him tell you. And you've got to be willing to wait long enough. Till you get it. Right? See, we live in a email, microwave, drive through world. And your flesh is used to that. And, and, and men, the, the flesh loves instant gratification. Now. Now. And don't like to wait. Don't make me wait. Yeah, but God said, wait. Didn't He? Wait. Be still. Know that I'm God. Wait on the Lord. You'll renew your strength. Wait. Right? So y'all are believing with me, right? Yes. Are we, are we rushed? No. <laughs> what would you be rushing to? You'd be rushing away from here to what? News. Sandwich. <laughs> Pajamas. Huh? <laughs> now the reason I say that is because if you've got enough people that are antsy, you, just, you can't go. You, you, you can't keep going. You, you, you can only go so far. But y'all are believing God with me, I'm asking now, right? With only, so a lot of things don't take so much time if you can get your mind off of everything else and focus. But if you're kind of half in and half out, and well, what do we want to do this and let's hurry up and let's do that. Well, the, the Lord is not okay with that. He, he don't want you reaching out to Him while you, you got your eyes on somebody else. Right? A lot of folk come to God like this. They're like, uh, God, <laughs> I'd I like to, give me that real quick, please. I, I, I'm in a hurry. Yeah, yeah, I got, I got stuff to do. No, he'll say, come on, come on up here close. Yeah, but God, I'm in a hurry. He said, I know it's part of your problem. Come here. <laughs> now sit down. Now be quiet. What's your big rush? And see, people are that way at church because they're that way at home. They're that way with their prayer life, if they have one. Right? With the reading of the Word and other things. So, uh, when you can relax on the inside, we which have believed do enter into rest. And you and I are believing God together. I didn't come here to give you a message. I come here to believe God together with you. For revelation. Right? Getting wisdom. We're getting our wisdom. We come here to get it. Well, you don't want to leave till you get it. Right? You're not going to get it from me. I'm not going to get it from you. We get it from Him. But we have to believe for it. You're believing with me for utterance, for an anointing, for revelation. So if you're, if, if even in your mind you're putting pressure on me to hurry up and do it, hurry up and do it. Or even right now say, well, well, quit talking about that and get to it, Brother Keith. <laughs> You're not listening. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Right. Why am I even talking about this? Because so much antsy, impatient flesh. You made it here. Right? Right? 
you might as well get some. By your presence here, you saying there's nowhere else I, I, I'd rather be. I've purposed in my heart. Everybody say discernment. Ecclesiastes 8. <laughs> Did you know this, that the, uh, the more antsy you are, the slower I have to go? <laughs> it's, it's just a fact. <laughs> Did you know that? <laughs> and that's some of what's been happening the first few minutes of this of this Ecclesiastes 8 are you there we saw this let's look at it again verse 5 whoever keeps the commandment shall feel no evil thing and a wise man's heart discerns both time and judgment what does discernment mean? To be able to tell the difference. Right? To be able to differentiate, to be able to distinguish. To discern. A wise person discerns time. Now, so we backed up, what was it, to the third chapter, and he talked about for everything there's a time and a season. For instance, there's a time to speak. And there's a time to be quiet. Well, what if you're talking when it's quiet time? Then you're foolish. And here, here's the bigger problem. What if you didn't know it was quiet time? <laughs> then you lack discernment. Right? Because discernment means you know the difference. Now, we're growing in these things. But how would you know the appropriate time to speak? And there's a time when people are quiet when they should speak up. How would you know what time it is and what it's appropriate to do? Only by the wisdom of God. But the wisdom of God gives us discernment. Now, another word for discernment is taste. Taste. You remember Job? We read it. We went and looked at it. He said the ear tries words like the tongue or the palate tastes food. Some people are better at tasting and discerning what's in something than others. Like me. I'm not so hot at tasting food. I know if it's good or not. <laughs> right? I'd say, hmm, that's good. But see, that's pretty simple. Right? A good cook would taste and go what? Hmm. Butter. It's garlic. What is that? Yeah. Be able to list off everything that's in it and have an idea of the proportion. Right? Uh, we used to go up to a, a place in Ohio with a Brother Hagen. Kenneth Hagin and Miss Aretha traveling together with them. And there was this guy that in the church there that owned a restaurant. And one of his specialties was uh, Bananas Foster and Cherries Jubilee. And he'd come out tableside and make them. And I'm telling you, they were tops now. And uh, me and Dad had a big time <laughs> with that. He said, which one are you going to try? I said, both. <laughs> <laughs> Because it was, just, you know, it was such a special deal. And uh, the guy that made them, was well, he Austrian? Is that what he was, Phil? Uh, that's, that's his occupation. He's a chef. And he's Austrian. And he, he told us after several years of this, he said, uh, now it wasn't on this, but it was on his uh, lobster thermidor. He told us he had never tasted it. We thought, huh? He said, no. After he got the recipe where he wanted it, 
And for years now, since he'd been making it. Why? He said, because I'll get, if I taste it, I'll get to messing with it. Because <laughs> see, his, his taste is developed. He's tasting nuances that a lot of folk are, are not discerning. Right? You say, well, pasta's pasta. <laughs> That's to the simple. Right? Well, uh, hold your place here and look in Hebrews, the fifth chapter. Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews 5. And notice this. Hebrews 5 and verse 10, 5, 10, he's preaching about Jesus and how the high priesthood compares to that of Melchizedek. Verse 10, he said, called of God, Hebrews 5, 10, called of God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. Well, we might say, well, Paul, why don't you just spit it out? you got something to say, say it. No. The ability of the hearer greatly affects and restricts or allows liberty to the speaker. He said, for, when the, for the time you are to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Is development automatic in walking with God? No, it is not. See, people sometimes think, well, you know, I've, I've been a Christian for 40 years. I've been a Christian for 50 years. That does not mean you're mature. You can be a baby spiritually, having been born again 50 years ago. Now, you ought not be, right? But like First Peter said, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And a couple of big reasons why people don't grow. One is they don't get fed. You say, well, I've been hearing preaching for X amount of years. That don't mean your spirit's getting fed. Depends on what you're hearing. If you're in excerpts from this novel and that novel and, and this political uh, thought and this theory and this experience and this religious tradition, that won't feed your spirit. You can hear that for a hundred years and be a baby. Never grow. Paul talked about being nourished up in the words of faith. What feeds you? Faith words. The word of God. In, now that doesn't mean every sermon has to be about faith. But it should be from faith and of faith and faith to faith. Right? That's why it's not going to nourish you. Can you tell if your spirit's being fed the Word of God? Can you tell? You can. I mean, just it, it's as real as eating a meal. Physical meal. You know it when your spirit's getting fed. It affects you. Now in that, notice this. He said, verse 13, everyone that uses milk is what? Now what's the definition of wisdom? Skilled. Skilled. Unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. A baby. But strong meat or strong food, solid food, belongs to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to what? Discern. To discern both good and evil. As you grow up in the Lord, you develop in discernment. I almost hesitate to use the word because it has such a 
religious connotation in so many people's mind. What did I just get through saying? As you develop spiritually, what happens? Taste. You develop spiritual taste. What does that mean? You can tell the difference between good and bad. Babies don't know. Right? Babies will put anything in their mouth. Won't they? They don't, they don't discern. They see it, goes in the mouth. It could be poisonous. It could be deadly. Now you and I, even if we didn't see it, if it touched our tongue, so many things would go, ah, we'd spit it out. Why? Because by reason of use. I mean, how many times does it take you to get a big slug of sour milk? <laughs> Until the next time your nose gets six inches from it, right? <laughs> and you don't have to take a big slug. You have developed in discernment. <laughs> sour is bad. Right? But little ones don't know that. The exact same thing is true spiritually. People just born again are like, like babes in the natural. And they can't handle full strong meat. They need milk. But if they're getting milk and by reason of use... Not just, I said two things a while ago. You got to be fed. What else must you do? You got to exercise. You got to be a doer. But if those two things are going on, then you should develop and you should grow and your discernment develops where you can tell. And as time goes on, uh, our, our babes in Christ should be very particular about what preaching they listen to. Why? Because their discernment is so low. Right? You, you and I, there's been times before in the past that I heard something and something about it bothered me. You? But I didn't know what. And they're reading scriptures, so I thought, it's got to be okay, it's in the Bible. But it was, what they were saying wasn't in the Bible. But I didn't have enough discernment where I was. We've all been there, right? Well, is there a lot more development from where we are? Yes. Discernment. What does that mean? Taste. Now go back to Proverbs uh, 11. Well, no, excuse me. Excuse me. Moving too fast. You are there. Let, let's read this again so it gets in us even stronger. Verse 14 Strong meat, strong food belongs to them who are of full age, even those who by what? Reason of use, what has happened? Their senses have been exercised, or we might say, and, and through that exercise developed, to discern, to know the difference between good and evil. Now back up to the fourth chapter of Hebrews. And look at the 12th verse. Tells you the real key to discernment. What does it say? Uh, Hebrews 4.12 For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a what? A discerner distinguisher, differentiator of the thoughts and intents of the heart. How can you tell what's me, what's God, what's right, what's wrong, what's good for now, what's not? Through exercising ourselves in the Word, as time goes by, our taste develops. And as time goes by, you know... Uh, what used to take, I used to have to, uh, you know, look at something and look at something and analyze it in a certain way to begin to see. Now, you can just hear a few words of it. And you can tell where it's going. Do you see what I'm talking about? You're, you're, it's like a cook. 
In the beginning you didn't know, but after a while, after a while. Now, go with me to Proverbs 11. We're making some progress. Proverbs 11. And notice this. <laughs> 11, 22. As a jewel of gold in a swine's snout, so is a fair woman, which is what? Without discretion. That's not how quiet it got. <laughs> what does that mean? A high dollar piece of jewelry in a pig's nose. <laughs> what does it mean? Well, it's, it's a waste of jewelry. Right? Is that what he's saying? And he's talking about a beautiful woman, a fair woman, attractive woman, lovely woman, uh, without discretion. Now that word literally means without taste. Without what? Taste. taste. Now see, we use this in our modern vernacular, don't we? Some, some, somebody says, well, they have no taste, which you shouldn't say about anybody. They don't have any taste. And the person that just got through saying that showed that they have no taste by saying such a thing. What, what does taste mean? You can tell the difference between what's appropriate. Uh, it's a waste. The, the looks, the clothes, man or woman makes no difference. The, the stuff, the appearance... You can be loaded for bear. But if you don't know whether to come or go, whether to speak or be quiet, what to bring up and what to leave alone, it's a waste. Are you getting ready? Are you primping? Are you prep? <laughs> I didn't write this. Boy, we, we're having one tonight, aren't we? Uh, you're there. Look in, uh, hold your place there and go to Ecclesiastes. Hold on to that thought. Yeah, hold on to it anyway. What is discretion? What is discernment? Taste. You know the difference. In Ecclesiastes 10, Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 2, a wise man's heart is at his right hand, a fool's heart is at his left, their heart's in different places. Now let me, let me say something here. People of God are not doing foolish, distasteful, inappropriate things all the time because wisdom is not available. They're doing it, you or me, whoever, because they don't care enough to take the time and look for it. Are you with me? Why do you just blare into somewhere and say the wrong thing and stick both feet in your mouth and mess up the atmosphere of the room? Why? You say, well, I guess I'm just dumb, Brother K. That's the easy way out. No. It's because you didn't care enough. To take the time to check your heart, 
to ask the Lord, show me how to approach this. And the Lord gave me something tonight when I walked in on the platform. In, it's back to the cooking analogy. In cooking, you should always taste before you serve. Right? <laughs> right? In case it's too salty. Right? Or too tart. Or something's wrong. Too bitter. You don't just shovel it out. What should you do? Taste and go. Yeah, yeah, that'll be fine. We serve that. That's what's supposed to happen in your heart and mind every time before you open your mouth. What you're about to say, what you're about to do, you're, before you open your mouth, you're supposed to go. Mm, let me see. Will that be right for this? And a lot of times you go, no, nah, uh-uh. No, nah, that ain't right for this. So you don't say it, and you save yourself all kind of problems. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But then, but see, if, you, if a th- thought crosses your mind and you spit it out, <laughs> it's too late. Yeah, Phyllis served us a lemon pie one time. I wasn't going to tell that, but she brought it up. Her dad loves lemon pie. And uh, she made us a pie. I'm telling you, this thing looked like a cover of a Betty Crocker book, man. I mean, the meringue was this high. Crust was perfect. We eyed that thing through the meal. Look what a pie. She served us a big old whopping slice. Me and her dad. I took a bite. Man, the thing looked wonderful. I took a bite, and man, it about pulled my lips inside out. But I tried to be cool because I wanted her dad to get the same effect. I didn't, I didn't want to give it away, so I, I just tried to, you know, he said, how is it? I went, mmm, mmm. So he took a big old slug, and he looked at me, and his eyes watered. As she examined it later, there was apparently some question about how much lemon rind you put in the pie. Because <laughs> there were multiple lemon rinds in the pie. But see, if you taste it before you serve it, then you find out that it's inappropriate beforehand. I'm going to go over this again slowly. (laughs) Christians, you and I, are doing dumb things, foolish things, saying things that are inappropriate, wrong place, wrong thing, wrong time. And it's not because you're too dumb. Because you are saved, right? You are born again, and you have the mind of Christ. So why are people doing it? Because they don't care enough to slow down. Take the time to check their heart and taste it before they serve it. Right? And... This is exactly what we've been talking about with wisdom and understanding through the whole time. If you want to develop in wisdom, you have to care enough to not just say whatever crosses your mind. You've got to examine it. Got to check your heart. Ask the Lord. Lord, show me how to do this. There have been some things in life and ministry that were challenging to have to deal with people about. 
And there's been times I've prayed half the night, sometimes most of the night, before I talk to them. Why? It's important that this be said the right way. Right? What should be said? Some things shouldn't be brought up. And not just what's brought up, but how it's said. Sometimes you can say the same thing, but how you say it makes all the difference in the world. Right? And the wisdom of God knows exactly what to say, how, the right way, the right time. Phyllis and I, well, you've heard us talk about it in the early days, early years of our marriage. We had terrible times. We've told you about it. And one reason we did is because of loose mouths. Just, you know, I think some people think God gave them their spouse to just dump their frustration on. Have to keep it pinned up and try to act right at work and at church and then come home and just lash out at each other. That is ungodly, unspiritual. It is not okay. And it means you don't care enough. But for year after year now, we just go months and months and months and not a cross word, not, nothing even to deal with. And one of, the, one of the reasons why is both of us have learned. I know many times with me something will come up and the Lord will check me, not now. Don't get into this now. It's not the right time. Right? Sometimes after you look at it for a while you think, don't get into it at all. <laughs> you just got stirred up. Right? But if you just serve it before you taste it, people's going to burn their mouth. They're going to be embittered, soured, right? Hurt, all kind of stuff. If you just taste it before you serve it. Can you say amen? How much more can you take tonight? Skip on down to the 12th verse of Ecclesiastes 10. 12. Well, 10. 10 goes with it. If the iron is blunt and he don't sharpen the edge, he's got to put more strength. But wisdom is profitable to direct. Verse 12. The words of a wise man's mouth are gracious, but the lips of a fool will swallow up himself. The beginning of the words of his mouth is foolishness, and the end of his talk is mischievous madness. Well, see, if he's wise, he'd quit talking. He'd see, this ain't going good. <laughs> the further I go, the deeper I'm getting. But a fool just keeps on plugging. And thinks they can fast talk their way out of it. So they turn on the tears. And you start talking fast, thinking, maybe, yeah, they can't keep, can't keep, can't keep, can't keep, can't keep up, can't keep up, can't keep up. Yeah, it was bad, it was bad. I was there, but then they came, and then, and we don't know, and I, I don't, oh, boo. <laughs> That's a fool. And a spiritual person sees right through it. Right through it. <laughs> and he said, verse 14, a fool is full of words. Full of words. A man cannot tell what shall be and what will be after him. Who can tell him? He don't know. You listen to the fool talk and you think, where's he going with this? I don't know. Where did he start? I, I lost him. <laughs> the labor of the foolish wearieth every one of them because he knows not how to go to the city. He doesn't know how to get to town. <laughs> the, the New Living says this. Uh, it says, uh, you can identify fools just by the way they walk down the street. <laughs> you can tell a fool. Uh, another translation says, when a fool walks by the way, his wisdom fails him, and he says to everyone that he's a fool. 
Just by the way he acts and how he's talking and what he's doing, he's saying, I'm a fool. I'm a fool. Fool, fool. Me, I'm a fool. That's what the scripture says. Even a fool is counted wise if he holds his peace. And you've got to be holding your peace to be tasting. Say it out loud. Taste, Taste. Before, you serve. before you serve. Did you get this now? Taste before you serve. That's discernment in exercise. Now, hmm, glory to God. Can we start into this tonight? I'm looking. Uh, Yes, go with me to, uh, you're, you're already in Ecclesiastes, just back up to the second chapter. Being a wise man or woman means that you, you have understanding, you, you discern, and discern means to distinguish or to separate. You know the difference between valuable and worthless, right? And remember Jesus said to people who were covetous, he said to them, he said, what is highly valued among men is detestable in God's sight. The English says the things that are considered of great value by man are worth nothing in God's sight. What's valuable? And what is not? In Ecclesiastes 2, verse 13, he said, I saw that wisdom excels folly as far as light excels darkness. How much better is it to walk in wisdom? Than in foolishness. Difference between night and day. Light and dark. Verse 14. The wise man's eyes are where? In his head. That's kind of like that where the where the tree falls. But there's more to it than you're thinking, right? The wise man's eyes are in his head. But the fool walks in darkness. Now, what does that mean, the wise man's eyes are in his head? Back up to Proverbs 17. Let me just keep giving you scripture. Proverbs 17. Twenty-four. Seventeen twenty-four. Wisdom is before him... That has understanding. But what? The eyes of a fool are where? Are in the ends of the earth. There is a perversion of faith. A perversion of prosperity. And I'll call it vain dreamers. And people who don't have discernment don't, don't taste it. They don't see it or hear it. And I'll be honest with you, it, it took me several years to begin to discern the difference myself. Say it out loud, vain dreamers. Now you know that the vision of God is precious, right? But that's not what I'm talking about. Uh, You're there in Proverbs. I'm moving slow. That's the only way I know how to do it. Uh. 
with this slower. Please stand by. <laughs> Where is that, Lord? Uh, Proverbs 12. Thank you. Proverbs 12 says it. Where were you? Okay. Proverbs 12. 11. He that tills his land shall be satisfied with bread. He that follows vain persons is void of understanding. The Amplified says, He who tills his land will be satisfied with bread, but he who follows worthless pursuits is lacking in sense and without understanding. The NIV says, He who works his land will have abundant food, but he who chases fantasies Lacks judgment. Say that out loud. He who chases fantasies. fantasies. Lacks judgment. judgment. There there are numbers of people. In so called word and faith circles. And they are fantasy chasers. They are vain dreamers. And they mask it as faith. And young ones and people that have not exercised their their taste don't know the difference. But one thing you will see is years go by and they're still talking some big thing. But right where they were 15 years ago. Are you with me now? This big huge deal and and you know we're going to we're going to finance half the body of Christ. And, and, and they got, you know, they're bumming off of their friends. Are y'all with me now? Now, y'all going to help me get this out, right? This is one of the things we were getting to tonight. A wise man's eyes are where? In his head. A fool's eyes are where? In the ends of the earth. A wise man works his land. What does that mean? What he's got. Oh, come on now. Are you all with me on this? A wise man. Doesn't mean that you don't have a vision beyond where you are, but you're not an idle dreamer. You put your hand to what you've got. Right? Right? And your eyes, yeah, by faith, you believe God's taking you beyond where you are. But you, see, pride wants to act like it's at a different place in faith than it really is. Oh, I'm so far out. No, no. Believing for a meal and believing for a tank of gas. and believe, Oh, no, no. I believe for big deals. Yeah, but you need gas. Which tells me you ain't there. Not only are you not there, you don't even have gas faith. Because you're fantasizing and dreaming about the multi-billion dollar deal. And not even believing for a tank of gas. And next time we see you, you'll be in the same place. And the next time, and the next time, and the next time. Are y'all with me on this? Do you understand? Have you heard what I'm talking about? 
See, a lot of people they think, oh, well, bless God, they, they got great big faith, they got great big vision. Well, do they? What if they believe for? Anybody can talk. <laughs> you got talking, you got doing. And a fool's eyes are in the ends of the earth. There's always some huge pie in the sky, something somewhere, some way. But a wise man's eyes, poof. right? And a wise man it is aware of my current resources. A wise man is aware of my seed now and my faith here. Right? How many remember the woman you know that they're about to come get her kids and sell them? And she came to the man of God and she said, you know, help me. And, and what did he say to her? I mean, she, she owes for everything. Her debt is so big that they're coming, taking her house, her land, her property, and her kids. In those days, they'd take your children and sell them for slaves and put the money on your debt. I mean, they, they, they are in you know, big debt. And he, what does he tell her? What do you have in the house? And she said, I imagine that surprised her. She thought, well... She might have thought, some people would have. They'd have said, well, what do you think, preacher? I got a bunch of money hid under the bed or something. That's why I'm here. <laughs> and that's the people that go down. What did he say? He didn't say, can you believe for a multi-billion dollar deal? What did he say? What do you have? What do you have? In the house. She said, I got a little pot of oil. I, you know, he said, that good, good. This is the key to the miracle right here. The little pot of oil. This is it. We're going to put our faith on this. You know the story. God did a miracle. Paid off all the debt and had plenty of money for him to live on for who knows how long. Jesus is looking at these crowds of hungry people on the hillside. Remember that? What did he ask him? He said, what do you have? Go and see. Go and find out what you got. What you've got. This is the master. Why don't we got to look up a little loaf and fish? Because it's what you have. It's where you are. The eyes of the wise is in his head. God has done this thing for us, paid for this property for us. It took three years, two months, which to me is not much, right? And I know God has done much bigger things financially in the world. But I'm not going to belittle what he's done for us by thinking like that. Are you with me now? This is what He's done for us. Right? For us. This ain't pie in the sky by and by. This is here and now. You and me. He's done it. This. Here. Now. Well, why didn't I just jump up the second week we were here? And so let's claim these millions but by the end of the week and another five or ten to do some ministry work. God's a huge God. Let's claim another two billion. Why not? Because <laughs> that was not where you were, and it's not where I was. Right? You don't receive, we don't receive according to what God can do. We don't receive according to the ability of God. We don't even receive according to the perfect will of God. How many times did Jesus tell people how they received? According 
to your faith be it to you. How many times did he tell people that according to your faith, according to your faith, that's how you receive. So, that's what I've been praying and looking at for the last several weeks and even prior to that. What's our next step? Right? Well, how would you know? Only by the wisdom of God. Where you are in faith, where I am in faith, right? Compared to the plan of God. You know, anytime you're believing for something, here's how I do it. You know. Anytime I'm believing for something, the first thing I try to find out is what is the very best in the world for it. The very best, the best in the world for what we're looking for. Then you find it out. Sometimes the price tag makes you go, (gasps) how much? So the next thing I got to find out is what? God's will is the best. If you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the the good of the land. But I don't receive according to God's ability. So what's my next thing i got to find out? Where's my faith? I know God can do this. That's not the issue. The issue is what can I believe? The wise man's eyes are... In his head, the fool's eyes are in the ends of the earth. Always some big fantasy. Do you all know what I'm talking about tonight? I'm going to read it again. Proverbs 12. Are you there? 11. We're having fun tonight, right? 11. He that tills his land, what will happen to him? He'll be satisfied with bread. But he that follows, and the King James says vain persons, but really persons is added. It's in italics. It's just vain. Vanities. Is what? Void of understanding. The Amplified said, He who tills his land will be satisfied with bread, but he who follows worthless pursuits. The NIV says, he who chases fantasies. Chases fantasies. But see, to the young, undiscerning, they think, well, they just got big vision. They just got big faith. No, they're just fantasizing. How would we know? Because nothing happens. And nothing keeps on happening. Year after year. And year after year. I'm so glad the Lord helped Phyllis and I begin to learn some of these things. When we, when we started off in the ministry, we started off on the bottom. She says under the bottom. That'd be right too. Yeah, we owed for everything. So that was, you know, you're not even even. You'd have to, you'd have to get to zero to be even. Right? But you didn't have anything, but you didn't know anything. So you're right. We were under the barrel. Minus, on the minus side. And uh, we, we believed God for every little thing. I know it seems small, but, you know, I, I, every week I believed God for a tank of gas. Of course, nowadays it's bigger than it used to be. But I used my faith. And there were times when I didn't eat lunch. And it wasn't because I was trying to be spiritual and fast. It was just a choice. But don't even begin to feel sorry for me. Because I was learning how to use my faith. Did you hear me now? And I learned how to believe God for a $50 pair of shoes. That was a big deal with me one year. I'm telling you, I stood for months on that. And somebody sent me $50. For a pair of shoes. And then the Lord told me to sew it to somebody else. But see, I'm being trained. He's training me how to be led by the Spirit. How to believe. Wasn't long after that I had several new pair of shoes. See what I'm saying? For the rent. Then we believed God. We were in faith for what, a year or two? To get an apartment that was not in the rough part of town. 
We had a great victory when we got to move. You know, no shooting in the streets. It's quiet over here. Glory to God. Had a washer and a dryer downstairs. Didn't have to go to the wash house. But now see, we weren't trying to believe for a multi-million dollar house. We knew God could do it. We knew it was His will. But how do we receive? According to our... And where were we at? We were at better apartment faith. And then we believed God for a better apartment. And then we believed God for a rent house. Oh, had our own garage. And in enjoying every step of the way. Do you, you see what I'm talking about? But some of the same, as I'm talking about this, some of the same people that started out with us, uh, they, they were too advanced from us. They couldn't be bothered with believing for little stuff like that. They're believing for, for money to finance the whole body of Christ. And they're still broke. Because they're chasing fantasies. And their eyes are in the ends of the world. And they're not tilling the land that's at their hand. Do you see this? And then we believe God for our own house. Ooh. And then a better one. I remember the first car we believed for. We didn't have new car faith. Are you kidding? No. We believed God for a good car. That was our faith. A good one that ran. That's what we're talking about. When it would get you there and back. And the heater worked. Yes. Ooh. And we got it. 88 Oldsmobile. It's back when a car was a car, brother. <laughs> and then we got a, a better used car, a Toronado. Two-tone paint. And just kept stepping up and kept stepping up. But we're talking about decades. Everybody say decades. 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 If you don't start where you are, you stay where you are. And you can't act too proud. Oh, I believe God for a tank of gas. I've been saved 40 years. Well, what have you believed for? Well, I'm not messing with all that little stuff. I'm believing to finance half the body. No, you're not. You're fantasizing. You're following vanities. You're full of talk, not faith. Right? Because years go by and years go by and you're not faithful. You don't plug in. You're not sowing your seed because you've got this big, big, huge deal about to break. And it didn't break and next year and next year and, and next year. You're not accountable for what you don't have. It's what you have. What you have. Go to 2 Corinthians. We'll close with this, I think. Tell me, the wise man's eyes are in his head. He tills his land. He does what's at his hand. Right? He sows his dollar. And he's happy about it. Right? Right? He believes God for his new pants on sale. And he shouts about it. Turns his testimony in. Right? But the thing is, you keep doing this every day, every week, every day, every week. We used to be given $5. Now it scores of thousands at a time. Well, you just keep building. Just keep increasing. Right? But if you don't start where you are, you stay where you are and regress. Second Corinthians, eighth chapter. Verse nine, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor that you through his Poverty might be rich. rich. Did he do it? Yes. Then are you? Yes. yes. 
He says, Herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you who have begun before not only to do, but to be forward a year ago. Now perform the doing of it. Do what? He said, you've been talking about it. If you read this whole chapter, you'll see they were talking and talking and talking. And other people got stirred up from them talking and had already sent offerings. And they hadn't sent theirs yet. He said, no, you've been talking and that's good. But now, do it. Do it that there, as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance. Also, out of what you're believing for. Out of what you have. Here and now. For if there be first a willing mind, it's accepted. See, this goes right along with purpose and in your heart. It's accepted according to what? To that a man has, not according to that he has not. It's what you have. I said, it's what you have. It's the light you have right now. Walk in it. It's the faith you have right now. Use it. It's the seed you have right now. Sow it. Right? It's the light you have. Obey and, and do what you know to do. No vain fantasies. No chasing worthless pursuits. And as you grow and develop, it, it, this will happen in you as it's happened in us. It, it, it took a while. God gave us an education through a lot of different ways. But now, used to, I didn't know people would start talking big stuff. And I'd go, yeah. Couldn't see through it. Now I believe God can do things beyond what you and I have even thought about. Right? But you, you, we developed where we can discern what is faith and what's just talk. Right? What is faith and what is fantasy. And, and there's a lot of con men and women that have thought the church an easy mark. Because we train ourselves night and day to believe. Not having to see. We're believers. <laughs> well God can do this and we believe, yeah, He can do it. And that's good. Well then trust me, whoa. Faith in God is one thing. Faith in you, an entirely different thing. We're to trust God without question. You are another thing. Right? We're not supposed to just trust each other blindly and follow each other blindly. Why? That'd be me following you. You following me. We're supposed to follow the Lord. And if you go along with me, if I jump up here and I say, Here, let's go do this. Let's believe for this. You should follow because you discern the Lord's in it. Did you hear me? You're not just following me. That way, if I were to get off, then you don't follow. Or anybody else. Because men are men. Women are women. They can miss it. And as you grow, you develop discernment and taste. And you can tell where somebody's giving you a snow job, or whether they're talking a bunch of stuff and fantasy stuff. They're just, you know, in la-la land with what they're talking about. They go, we're going to believe this or we're going to do that. We're going to do the other. You know God can do these big things, but are they believing for? Well, look at their life. What have they believed for? What have they already done? Like Brother Hagin said, a fella come in one time and he announced to this, he, he's stranger to everybody. Nobody's even seen this guy. And he walks into this well-founded, established church and pops up and tells this pastor, he said, now I'm a prophet and an apostle and God sent me here and you're supposed to submit to me. Well, God used this man to found this church and, and, and pastored and, and, you know, it's grown up and developed. Here comes this stranger. And so he asked the question, what have you built? How many churches have you built? What, what have you started? And Brother Hagin said the fellow hadn't even built a chicken coop. <laughs> Just because somebody writes a big book and it's four color and, and hard bound and they got initials on the end of their name. What does that mean? 
you should ask the question, what have these people done? What have they believed for? What have they built? What have, how have they been used to advance the kingdom of God? Right? Oh, well, they're educated and it's in the book. Well, so what? Anybody can write a book. <laughs> Folk teaching about, you know, their finances. Well, how's your finances? If it, if it, if it was going to work for me, it should work. If it already worked for you. Right? This should be fruit. It's accepted according to what a man has, not what he doesn't have. Can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. I think I got one more. Hebrews. Can you take another one? Thank you, Lord. Hebrews 6. Well, we did get it out. I don't know if everybody's happy about it or not. <laughs> I'm happy we got it out. <laughs> Glory to God. Did you, did you get the discernment part? The taste part? Some things look the same. They sound the same to the undeveloped eye and ear. But for those with discernment, you tell they're not the same at all. There's a world of difference. There's some people, they come telling me about some great big deal. And, you know, uh, we're going to have $10 billion to put in the church next month. Uh, you know, it's like somebody saying, twinkle, twinkle, little star. There's other people, if they told me that. Did you hear me? I, I, I start looking for it. Are you with me? Do you understand what I'm saying? Because some people have faith. And some people have believed their way up through these levels to where they're believing for things like that now. And others are just fantasizing. And never even started where they are. In Hebrews, the sixth chapter. Hebrews 6. That's not the right one. Thirteen is what I want. Hebrews 13, verse 7. Remember them which have the rule over you. Is there anybody that has the rule over you? Yes. People. Yes. The answer is yes. A lot of folk don't know it, but the answer is yes. Those who have spoken to you the word of God. Whose what? Faith. Whose talk? No. Whose faith? Follow. Considering what? The end. the end of their conversation, which means their lifestyle. People you can follow are not just people who talk. Not just people who preach. Right? Whether it's preacher or of brother or sister. People who do. People who believe for it and it comes in. Believe for it and it happens. Right? And you keep seeing it day after day and week after week and month after month. What's the next phrase? Jesus, the anointed one. What? The same. The, see, all this goes together. The same. Yesterday, today, forever. What? A good leader is going to be that way. Right? A, a, a solid child of God's going to be that way. The same. The same. Yesterday. Today. Tomorrow. Just same thing. Say, say the word. Believe the word. Stand. Still sowing. Still believing. It's getting bigger. We're not as far as we're going to be, but it's getting bigger. And we shout over the victories. We don't, we don't put it off till we get to the big thing later on. We enjoy every rung. We enjoy every step. Right? How many are going to come celebrate with us? Thanksgiving. Paid in full. Huh? It's what God's done for us. We're going to shout. We're going to give thanks. We're going to praise God. Sing and play and dance. I think we ought to dance some that Sunday. What do you think? I think so. So bring your dancing shoes. And, and give thanks. Give thanks. And 
Give faith. Do not despise anything the Lord does for you because the same faith you believe for five dollars with, you feed it long enough, you can believe for five million. Works exactly the same way. So you shout. Because it's working. It's working. Somebody say it's working. The word's working. Faith is working. God is faithful. Stand on your feet, please. Oh, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Praise you. Praise you. Bless you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Close your eyes if you would. Now the thing that runs parallel with this, people who've had trouble, and I know this has been a little bit rough on some people's flesh tonight, but it's, it's a great thing because it's an answer. And now instead of just bumping along and going year after year and not making progress, you can change and begin to get real results. One of the big things that's the, that allows this fantasy chasing, vain pursuits, is dishonesty. It's a primary dishonesty in people not willing to admit where they really are, trying to pretend and act, display a front. Well, the Scripture said that all things are open and naked before the eyes of Him with whom we have to do, and the Word is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So let's pray right now and let's humble ourselves. And we'll pray it out loud so that everybody can join in unhindered. Say it out loud, Father God, Father God I, believe I believe all things, all things are, possible to you are possible to you and possible to him that believes. To him that Nothing, Nothing is too big for you. I also see see that I receive, receive. not just according to what you can do, do. but according to my faith. faith. Open my eyes. eyes. Enlighten me, I pray, to see see. any any fantasy chasing, any foolish, vain pursuits, trying to act like I'm at a place that I'm not, dishonesties, pride, reveal it to me, help me to see it, forgive me of it, and show me what's in my hand, show me what's my land to till. What I can do now, where my faith is now, what the next step is now. And no matter how small it is, I'll not despise it, but I'll humble myself, I'll acknowledge the truth, and I'll begin to follow you and let my eyes be in my head. And walk in wisdom and reality in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's just praise Him a while. Lift up your hands, your heart. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We praise you. 
Oh, we thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, bless you, Lord. 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 Oh, bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Oh, bless you. Praise you, praise you, praise you. Praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for growing us up, giving us discernment so we can taste and know the difference. In Jesus' name. God is a good God. Scripture said, taste and see that He is good. We're going to sing God is a good God as we go. Yes, He is. If you're here this evening and you're not sure about your salvation, you don't know for sure if you are saved or if you died tonight, if you'd go to heaven or hell, that's serious business. Don't leave in that condition. People will be moving about, many of them going towards the back. You come down to the front. People won't know why you're moving around. There'll be people standing here ready to talk with you and pray with you. You can know. It's real simple. Jesus has already done all that needs to be done for it if you believe and receive Him properly. Hallelujah. God's a good God. Can we sing that? What key are you? Oh, God is a good God. Yes, He is. You're dismissed. God is a good God. Yes, He is. Everybody say, God is a good God. He's a good God. Yes, He is. Yes he, yes, he yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, God, God is a good God. He's a good God. Yes, he is. I know God. God is a good God. Oh, yes, he is. I know, I know God. God is a good God. He's a good God. Yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. 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 God's a good God. God is a good God. Yes, He is. Oh my God. God is a good God. Yes, He is. God is a good God. Yes, He is. 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 God is a good God. Yes, He is. God is a good God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is.